Right, I'm using the ultra wide lens on my camera just so that I can, I can fit all of this in. So uh, I finally received the sort of magic box of tricks that my friend Mike built for me. Uh, this box is replicating what a device called a terminating unit uh, used to do. So the original signal from the sort of local telephone exchange would have come into the local police station and it would have connected then to the terminating unit and then the carrier control point, the CCP, nuclear warning point, would have then been connected by this umbilical cord into the terminating unit. So Mike was able to track down the original uh, sockets that this then plug can go into and he's got a power supply in there and a few little other little toys which, uh, which means that the CCP can pretty much operate the way it did originally. Um, it's got a 240 volt connection here. It has got an RJ11 so that I can connect it up to one of the uh, speakers and then it has a telephone connection as well for future additions. So the unit itself, the way it is now, uh, the car control point is powered by, if you want emergency power, there's a 12 volt battery inside. So what I can do is I can hold down this button and that means that this will run off 12 volt. So in the case of a full power failure, you can still send out the confidence tick, which is shown up here. And I have this connected up to two, uh, two, war two warning speakers. And you can see there the red light is on inside that. That is being powered. So it's working the way it should do with the emergency power. Then when we turn it on, we've got this flash just to let you know. And then now that is working off the 240 volt then and it's supplying 16 volts to the car control point and that is now charging the internal battery. So for uh, if, if in case of emergency and there is a full power failure, you can still run it off 12 volt. Now this also has a 12 volt inverter inside it. So I can run this off 12 volt and it'll power this as well. So Mike has pretty much thought of everything with it. So what does the box do? Well, as you can see, it is powering and it's getting the confidence tick. If I go over to the speaker, as you can see, it is working. 100% and what we can do is we can simulate on a full nuclear attack so the full four minute warning so if RAF Filingdales uh, which is in, in the Yorkshire Moors had uh, detected an intercontinental ballistic missile launch uh, they would have set off uh, the WB-1800 uh, the handle warning system and uh, that would have then activated these telephones. So to get that to work, Mike has very, very clear, cleverly added these two buttons. So if I press this button here, so they will start flashing and then you would have picked up both telephones. The policeman would have put those to his ears in the police station and he would have heard the attack warning message. He would have then hung up. He would have then turned the key. He would have then set off the air raid sirens by pushing up on this. So that would then send the tones to the local air raid sirens and uh, that would then set off the sirens. So that long pip you're hearing, that's the siren spooling up. Then it stops, so the st siren starts spooling down. And then that's the siren spooling up again. And then the siren spooling down. So that's your attack noise on the siren. Next, he would have then pushed down. And that was a four minute warning then. And then he would have picked up that. He would have spoken into these. Attack warning red, attack warning red, attack warning red. And then replace the two telephones. And that was your attack warning message. So the people in the ROC posts and uh, other places where you would have got the warning speakers had now been alerted to the attack warning. And... Uh, Every time there was a, a, you know, going to be an, another bomb going off, you were still giving this warning every single time until the attack phase were over or you had been decimated in an atomic explosion. So the attack phase is out of the way. It's now fallout. So these are in the police stations. If you wanted to call the local ROC group headquarters, you would have pressed this button. 
and that would have contacted the local ROC group headquarters. You could have then spoken to them via this black telephone. And if there had been fallout approaching, the ROC group headquarters could have contacted you. And I press this button here. You could have then picked up that telephone and spoke to the ROC group headquarters, received the fallout information from them. And then we've got a button here that says call. So we pressed down on call. And that was to let the people know that there was going to be a spoken message coming through. And then again, you would have picked up the two red telephones. Fallout warning black. Fallout warning black. Belfast 38. Belfast 38. Fallout warning black. And that would have given you then your fallout warnings. So people were able to know then that fallout was approaching. So uh, Mike has been building this box for me for a couple of months now. It is pretty incredible. Uh, you know, the technical know-how to be able to do this by looking at wiring diagrams, uh, knowing how this unit works, and uh, then being able to construct something like this is... Uh, I, I, I still don't know how he's able to do it. Absolutely amazing. And um, as you can see, I'm able to now fully demonstrate how this unit worked. Uh, either with I have power or if I have to use 12 volt, which, which is amazing. So the next sunny day, I will be bringing this box and this carrier control point over to my bunker. And I am going to hook it up to the warning speaker below ground and uh, see how that sounds and works because I think when I have my next open day being able to use this while people are below ground I mean I was using pre-recorded mp3s and I was setting it off with a little remote control down below ground and yes that was good it gave people an idea how it works but now I'm able to do it live I'm able to literally pick up the telephone while they're downstairs visitors are downstairs and give the attack warning message you know from above ground which is going to be amazing so, uh, yeah, I'll definitely do a video of that when I'm testing it all out so you can see what it sounds like. But I just wanted to do a reasonably quick video. Um, we're up to seven minutes now, but I just wanted to do a quick video just to show you how the system operated exactly as it would have operated. And, uh, yeah, gave you a bit of an idea of how the end of the world would have sounded. But, uh, listen, folks, uh, thank you all very, very much for watching. And uh, until next time, bye-bye.